this one's going to be a fascinating one. Um, you're going to get a taste of what it's like to innovate um, fast with a large group, um, as many of you have probably been through um, situations like we're all in now facing innovation that's forced, right? Pushed upon you. Um, I was thinking about it as I'm up here on what I'm calling half vacation or entrepreneur's vacation. Um, the fact that uh, there's people out there that have gone through where they've been out innovated by other brands, by other companies, right? And that there's a history of that. You know, the situations where Google, you know, stood up and said, we didn't see Facebook coming. We didn't, we, they were right there and we didn't even see them. They competed with us in a big way and they got out innovated. Um, now there's a lot of people who have seen that, who've been through that, who are going through that with this, um, as those that are adapting and those that are not. So um, this is going to be an interesting one. You're gonna get a lot out of it. Um, you're gonna have some interesting takeaways as to how to innovate quickly, how to go through a design sprint or what that looks like and the magic of it. Um, but first a word for our sponsor and by our sponsor, Capsule. Um, we are a special projects firm here in Minneapolis. Well, kind of scattered throughout the Twin Cities um, because our office is where our people are. And uh, we do a lot of interesting special projects like invent new trade schools, which is something we're currently working on. Um, invent a new form of chocolate, which is something we're currently working on. Um, and also rebrand a lot of interesting brands and do a lot of other interesting things. We call it special projects because they're interesting, challenging, and we have to bring in a nice, interesting custom team to do it. So that's enough on the capsule team. I only use three minutes of my allotted five minutes. So we've got extra time for ideating, two extra minutes. I'm gonna hand it over to Nick and Scott to do their introductions. Well, sure. Go, go ahead, ahead, Scott, you go first. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll kick it off. Hi. Um, one, thanks, Capsule, for having me. This is uh, going to be a fun event. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. So I'm Scott J. Kaczynski. I'm Right now, I am, uh, I guess, co-founder, chairman of Alchemy 365. We're a group fitness concept, and um, I'll come back to that in a second. But for the last 25 plus years, I've been either a operator, founder, investor in early stage to growth companies. So um, Got a taste of it in the uh, early 90s and have never looked back, and it's been um, a fun ride. Um, Talking about innovation, I mean, COVID uh, forced us to change literally in 24 hours because I think the the uh, order to close from Governor Walls came down. I don't remember the date anymore, but it was literally like, uh, you're going to close now. And so we had to pivot to digital without a digital plan. We had digital on our roadmap. But it was probably a good 12 to 24 months out, probably um, post Series A, which, by the way, we had just kicked off a Series A process 10 days before COVID hit. So that obviously went into a holding pattern. And so, you know, the, the, the kind of the, I guess, the blessing of COVID, because I think you got to think of this as having it happen for you, not to you, is we did pivot to digital. We had uh, coaches in their homes doing it. And now we've gone to a studio. We've got a paywall up. We've got, uh, I think, over 800 members that are paying us. And so all of a sudden now we're looking at, hey, what's our, our MRR need to be in this new model that could potentially attract uh, investment dollars? So, you know, this has been a crazy time, but there's, it's, it's not all been bad. It's been overall interesting. So anyway, that's uh, just a bit about me. And um, I've known Nick for a few years, so it's fun to, to get to have an opportunity to work with him with Capsule right now. Yeah. Hey guys, my name's Nick. Um, I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of ILT Studios. We are a startup studio uh, based in St. Cloud. Um, uh, we are focused on supporting underestimated entrepreneurs in underserved areas. Um, uh, if you want to say by trade, I'm an a innovator and an entrepreneur. Um, I help develop uh, ideas, uh, uh, sorry, I help develop assets and then activate uh, ideas and people. Um, and uh, I've had opportunity to know Aaron for probably the last like five, 10 years and, and Scott, as I mentioned, uh, we met a few years ago uh, back when I was uh, in the fitness space uh, as the director of innovation at Lifetime Fitness. Um, and so I'm excited to be able to uh, partner and collaborate and, and give you guys a taste of uh, some of the fun stuff that we've been doing in uh, innovation labs with uh, uh, organizations and corporations 
um, all over the country um, and, and, and show you guys how you can do this work in a virtual world because we're all sitting here on a Zoom call in our bedrooms, basements, garages, and, and wherever we are. So I'm excited to see everybody. Great. That's great. Kelly? We ready to kick things off? I think so we are. We're going to do this a little differently, Aaron, as you mentioned, um, and certainly still welcome those of you that have joined us before for Think and Link. Welcome questions in the chat. Um, this will be an interactive engage engagement, um, but not a mandatory engagement in terms of the, the mural board that we'll be using a little bit later in the program. But I thought perhaps Scott and Nick, we could start by giving some context about what we're going to do today. Um, and uh, obviously we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what we mean by innovation, what you mean by innovation, and how we can apply some methodologies to help the team here, the attendees understand how to apply this to their organization. Um, actually, I'd like to start with that question. You've touched on it both individually, but if you could give us, give the group here today a, a, a better understanding of what what you mean when you say innovation. Start there. Scott, you want to kick it off? Sure. Yeah, I think that um, to me, the simplest way to think about it is it's whenever a company introduces a new process, service, or, or um, product or line of business that they, they expect a positive change from. So to me, that's like innovation at its simplest. So it's, it's, it's the opposite of status quo. What are you doing to make changes to improve your competitive position? That's to me in a nutshell how I define it. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, uh, you know, the way that I uh, talk about it is I want to make sure people don't get confused that um, we don't mean inventing new things. What we're talking about is unlocking new value. Um, and so that can happen again, like Scott mentioned, um, through business innovation, product innovation, um, uh, experience innovation, but not, we, we don't, we don't need it in the sense necessarily of like that we have to come up with a, a new widget or a new thing. Um, that's the way that, that uh, I like to clarify it as well. Right. And could you both talk a little bit too about the types of innovation? So Nick, you gave it, obviously, we're not talking about inventing necessarily here, but, but talk about the types of innovation we can see in a business sense. Yeah. Um, Scott, I'm going to bring up the, the graphic uh, yeah. so everybody can see it. Sounds good. Yeah, so as you guys, if you go out and Google right now and look for types of innovation, there's a lot of different things, but when you distill it down, there tends to be three general types of innovation. So if you can, if you, if you had need to zoom in on your screen, the, the lower left side core innovation, that tends to be biz, uh, innovation within a, a, your core business. So that could be process improvement, that could be uh, potentially adding a new product or service, but it tends to be more linear and incremental kind of innovation. That next uh, layer out, the adjacent, that's more, um, that's typically done by M&A in a lot of companies. Uh, if you look at a lot of the innovation that's happened in companies like Google, Facebook, um, after they initially launched, all the innovations or most of that came afterwards was through acquisition. And so but that's, a, a, that's, it's an area that there tends to be a lot of activity in, especially if you look at like a company like United Health Group in town. I mean, they do a ton of acquisitions. And then that outer band, the transformational, you'll also hear it described as disruptive. These are those things that are um, not necessarily linear. They tend to be just, they can be out of the blue. They can either happen to you or for you. And so this might be um, an example. If you think about Blockbuster and Netflix back in the day, if you were Blockbuster looking at this chart, your core would be how do we get more late fees? How do we get more customers coming in on a, on a um, not on Friday, but on a Tuesday night? Those would be kind of the core innovation. And then on the adjacent, they might've acquired a business to help them mail out DVDs. But in that transformational, which is again, the farthest out and hardest to really think about, um, they weren't really thinking about broadband and content creation and mobile devices and streaming and, until Netflix came out. And then all of a sudden they were following and they never caught up. So um, think about that transformational as if, if this was a portfolio, you'd allocate in a you know normal business, 70% of your dollars into the core, 20 into the adjacent, 10% into transformational, but the returns are the reciprocal of that. So that 10% investment will probably drive 90% of the value. 
um, or has that potential. And some of the things you'll see in transformational, it tends to be corporate venture capital. You'll see accelerators, incubators. You'll see joint ventures. Um, again, acquisitions tend to be in the adjacent column, but uh, that's just a kind of a quick overview of the, the types of innovation that you typically see out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with that. And I, you know, I think you know, one of the things, depending on you know, where you sit within your organization, um, you should, you, the things that we're gonna sh uh, show you uh, in just a few moments, um, they work in all three areas. Um, I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm not, I can only be innovative if I'm working in a transformational or a breakthrough thing, but there's a lot of things that you can do even at the core level um, to innovate and really change that experience. Um, but I think it's important um, when you're discussing that, you know, with your team or with other people, is that it's not about optimizing. Um, you're going to end up cannibalizing or even killing things that you're currently doing um, because you want to unlock a new potential or open a new market. So, um, uh, and, and you'll 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 start to see how that kind of works as we continue to move forward. But I, but I think it's really important that that there is value trapped in all three parts of the business um, but the things that you can do in that 70 percent again they will help you in your business today um, but we we also believe it's important that you think about spending some time out in that transformational space because that's you know that's where the future curve is uh, of course um, one of one of the things that we talk a lot about is um, you know being digital doing digital versus being digital um, I, I think it's, uh, you know, as someone that spent a lot of time in the technology space, you know, it's really easy to find yourself sitting in a, uh, a boardroom talking about how we need to do this digital transformation, or we need to be doing more things digital. Um, and, and I think what, what people often confuse is the difference between doing and being like, if you, uh, if you find that your team isn't using uh, digital tools, you're probably not a digital company. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't be. It just means you need to start working harder at it um, because the digital thing isn't going away. And uh, as, you know, COVID jumped in here, right? We've had to do digital in ways that we probably weren't expecting, weren't ready for. And, and the core of our business was not prepared to be a digital company, let alone a digital first company. Um, and so, uh, as Scott and I were talking through this in preps, there's some really interesting things here that, that we wanted to kind of highlight. Yeah, it's interesting. And I know a bit of this is like, you know, hindsight's 2020, but I think as consumers and, and, and these are all, uh, consumer brands, you know, you could see a lot of this come. I mean, we've, we've seen Sears die a slow death. Mm -hmm. We've saw Blockbuster go out in flames. And I, get, I think it's more of the moral of the story is you need to be thinking about all three uh, areas of innovation uh, to minimize that you end up on the right side of this graph. You want to try to be on the left side. I know. Um, so, you know, you might be thinking, well, uh, so how do we, how do we start unpacking this? Like, how do we move forward? How do, how do we think, how do we, how do we be innovative instead of talking about something like we're going to do it tomorrow? Um, it, well, the frameworks help, right? This is a framework that we use. Um, when we're working with uh, startups uh, or people that are, are really in that transformative space, but they, but they work all the way across the board. Um, how do you take a problem, uh, a solution, uh, a customer, and the context? If you can start unpacking that within your either idea, your business, your department, and start to understand how does that tie to the insights and observations that you're seeing occur every day, you know, you'll realize that there's a spectrum, but often we tie the solution and the customer together, or in many cases, we're not even thinking about the customer. Um, and there's, there's a way to unpack this um, and talk about it as a group and team, but you, you need to decouple um, these four things from each other. And so we, we find this is a really important framework um, to discuss any type of idea, problem, customer, um, and then the context for where they're using your product or your solution. 
Great. So Nick, these are the, just for the group, these are suggested strategies, right, to help organizations and startups be more innovative, something mm -hmm. they can apply yes. um, at any point within their organization. Any thoughts you have in terms of how, um, how organizations or individuals who are responsible perhaps for moving innovation forward um, can sell this into their C-suite or introduce these concepts to? Uh, that, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, I think, uh, where I've found the most success is by, um, you know, by doing it, um, yeah. uh, you know, st always, you know, starting small with a small experiment or, you know, starting to try it out so you can get some competency in it. Um, and, uh, uh you know, if, if you find yourself in a conversation with, uh, you know, someone that you're trying to sell into, like, just break it down. So what, you know, what are the key problems that we're trying to solve for here? And, oh, that's a really interesting solution. Um, who would that be for? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and are there other people that might also want this solution? Um, and what if, what if they ate our, if we were talking about breakfast shakes or something like that, like, well, what if they didn't just have breakfast shakes for breakfast? What if we changed the context or, you know what, there's a new regulation that just came out where uh, the government's offering discounts for people to eat healthier, right? We see this new opportunity. So um, as you start to kind of play with a framework like this and start to, you know, um, use it with people and, and share it, um, uh, often I found that that's where you get the best buy-in um, is you don't come to them with this new thing. You just start doing it. And eventually someone's going to say, how are you able to do this so quickly? You keep, you're, you're able to uh, diagnose and unpack what's going on. Like, I really like that. I'd like to do that. Um, uh, I guess that's how I've sold it, uh, you know, right. internally. I don't make it such a big thing, basically. Got it. And, I, and I think where we're, um, I think for me, the, the, the uh, kind of a breakthrough moment on <clears throat> innovation was, and I, I don't know if you can go to the three box, I don't, I don't know if anybody can see this book. This book, The Three Box Solution, is an excellent way to start creating the strategy for innovation. So the, the three box in a nutshell is, box one is manage the present. So you've got a business, it's growing, it's successful, um, or it's been impacted by COVID, but that's your, that's your cash cow. That's, that's what you gotta manage. But you also gotta be thinking about the innovation horizon. So how do I create the future? And the biggest challenge with that is that box two in the middle, how do I selectively abandon the past? How do I forget what made me successful? So again, I'll, I use the Blockbuster example. They had a big challenge with, I've got you know thousands of brick and mortar stores with thousands of employees. I've got late fees that are driving my P&L. It's really hard to take a VP of strategy and say, keep managing that core business and go take care of this Netflix thing on the side. It's just not, it's just not gonna work. And so you need to, this book and this approach really helps you figure out um, how to create a strategy for thinking about your core business and how to create the future. And yeah, just, just that alone, we could go on for hours just on the, the three box solution. So that's one as one takeaway today. If you're looking for a book to read on this, I would highly recommend buying this book and reading through it. It's a super simple strategy, super, it's an easy way to sell into up across and down in a company because it's really an easy book to uh, get your, your head around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. I think, um, uh, you know, uh, Kelly to riff off of what you said and, and, and what Scott's talking here about it, it is about, um, this is about setting expectations. Um, mm -hmm. while you're, while you're doing, uh, while you're making changes, you're, I mean, you should always be getting feedback from your customer and figuring out what you need to do next while also keeping your eyes up and looking out in the future to see what's coming at you to figure out, you know, do, do I need to, do we, do we need to swallow them or are they gonna swallow us, right? We always gotta be, uh, 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 you know, be aware of kind of what's going on. Um, the other thing that I was gonna mention, um, uh, Scott, after you said this about the book is, you know, The 10 Faces of Innovation um, is a great book. You need to find the other innovators in your organization um, and you need to understand who they are because there's different types, right? There's, there's hurdlers, right? They'll, they'll jump over anything. There's experimenters. They'll try anything. 
Um, there's the people that are going to do the opposite of what everybody says, right? There's, there's all these different types of innovators and they're all around you. But if you can, if you can figure out who they are um, and how they work or operate, you'll know also how to, you know, kind of bring them into the fold to help you accomplish, you know, whatever, whatever that objective or that, that innovation that you want to try to work on. Um, and, and so the, the 10 faces of innovation um, by IDEO is a, is a great book to help you even understand yourself as an innovator um, and to find the other people that are in your herd. Um, so I'd like to jump in here, Nick, and, and share a story, um, a story on the background of, of Nick. If back when we originally, well, maybe not originally met, but met for the first time when you were at Lifetime and you had a very large warehouse space with a large amount of whiteboards and there was no one there except for Nick. And we're talking like 10,000 square feet and Nick and he's just hanging out and it was a space they had. And that was the first time. And, and then we met again, probably uh, six months or a year later and there were more people there and more boards. And then when he left there, there were, I think too many people there. There were a lot of people there and he kept, I could tell he kept drawing people into his world, right? He was the innovation department. And then there, there was innovation happening once he was departing uh, Lifetime. It was a fascinating thing to watch over a timeline of probably only being there three or four times in that space. Uh, but you could tell he, he facilitated conversations around, around innovation and that drew people into what was happening, the kind of thinking. And it's, it's really exciting thinking. It's really fascinating to be around. It keeps me moving every day because of what can happen when you see these opportunities. It gives you hope when you see innovation happening. So anyway, just wanted to share that as a thought on what attracts people to Nick. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate that. I, 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 think, it, I think it's important that you find other people that want to get on the boat with you um, and, uh, and, and then go as fast as you can. Um, push, push those ideas, uh, you know, push the innovations forward, push pleasing your customers. Um, and if you can react fast enough, you're going to, you're going to catch, you're going to catch your customers and you're going to catch people in the right spot. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's super important. Um, well, and, and I know one of the things that, that we want to talk about is so like, so how do you do this? Um, you know, Scott and I are talking about, so managing things is, is important once you have things to manage. Um, but what Scott and I wanted to talk about is like, well, so how do you, how do, you do it? Um, how do you fill a room with post-it notes in two years? <laughs> to, to, you know, Aaron's point. Um, well, you, you, just, you just frame up the things that you know. Uh, you, you frame up the things that you think you know. Uh, you try to find out, get feedback from your customers. Um, and, and, and hopefully along the way, you can find those things that you didn't know you didn't know, right? Like there's that whole matrix uh, that kind of goes with it. Um, and so what we want to show you really quickly is, so how do you frame up an ideation session? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tools, processes, and methods here, and we love to share them all. Um, but we wanted to take an opportunity here uh, to do this with you in real time, uh, online, um, so we're kind of we're kind of geeked out to try this, and we hope you guys can play along. Um, uh, we're gonna generate, we're gonna do a little synthesis, not a lot, um, and some exploration. Um, uh, we want to talk about what's most important, right? That's not everything that you come up with. As is, you know, when, when uh, Aaron Scott and I are are and Kelly and the team at Capsule are, are ideating on stuff, like not everything we talk about is important for sure, but if we can figure out what are the most important things, then we can go deeper in those areas uh, and then figure out how to move forward, right? And so we talk a lot about like, okay, that's a great idea. How do we move that into action? Uh, so we wanna just, we wanna give you a small taste, but this isn't just a watching thing. So if you are on a laptop, um, iPads and iPhones will not be a great experience for you, unfortunately. But if you are on a mobile device, um, just stay in the Zoom. Uh, Kelly or Thomas is going to share their screen as Scott and I kind of travel forward. But if you're on a laptop, um, we're going to share a special link with you here in a moment. Um, 
And so I'm going to switch off of sharing my screen uh, so that I can get my chat window back. Um, uh, Thomas, if you can share, that would be awesome. And Nick, as we as we move into that, so again, we're going to share this link so so the, the uh, attendees here can join us in this experience or just watch the experience as we go through it. Um, do we want to talk about this? How might we in this challenge um, and, and introduce that, which I think we see here, but kind of walk everyone through that approach. Yeah, um, and uh, does Thomas have his screen up, or is he sharing for everybody? That yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna paste this link in here. I just need to get back to everyone. So in the chat window, <clears throat> there's a link that you can click on, and it will bring you into our mural uh, experience. We're using a a tool called Mural. It's an online collaboration tool. Um, uh, works uh, for enterprise, works for individuals, works for startups. Um, it's really awesome and it will allow us to do uh, a bunch of collaborative stuff. Um, we'll give you some instructions along the way. Um, so don't worry, you can't get lost forever, but um, uh, there are some little zoom controls in the bottom right hand corner so you can zoom in and out. Um, and, and again, if you just want to watch, um, you can stay in zoom with us, um, otherwise you can click the link and uh, you'll be brought in as a colorful animal of some sort. Um, I think I just saw a llama go by my screen. Um, and there's a giraffe, someone coming in as a snail. Uh, I see you Shelby, awesome. Um, there's a couple people that have mural counts already. This is fantastic. Uh, there's a visiting lobster, this is great. Um, so, um, uh, Scott, do you, uh, do you want to um, you start our riff here and kind of talk about how we got to this uh, design challenge? Yeah. So I think um, I think rather than like explain around, we're just going to dive into it. Okay. And so here's how, here's the framing. Um, Governor <laughs> Walls uh, had a really bad experience at the DMV, and he got really <clears throat> ticked off, and he hired the Think and Link consulting team, all of us, to solve this thing. And so. We, um, we are on the clock right now. We, we have 30 minutes, roughly a little less than that to, to go through this process. And we're gonna uh, take you through a few how might we statements that we um, are using to help frame up how we improve the experience of the DMV. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, one of the things that, uh, that you'll do is you're, you'll do this all the time, right? You're, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're at the bubbler, um, you're in the, you know, you're in your office space and you talk about different things that are going on in your business. So we picked the DMV, right? Cause, um, uh, Scott, I like how you framed it up before. It's like, you know, we asked a couple of random people, would you rather have a root canal or go to the DMV and everybody picked the root canal, right? So, um, we know it's not a great experience, but the reason why it's not a great experience it's not because they're terrible at making experiences. Um, and I guarantee you that who's ever running the DMV didn't wake up and say, we wanna make it the hardest thing possible. Um, it's hard because we don't go to the DMV very often. Um, and there's a lot of friction built into that experience. Um, it, uh, sometimes it's through the roof, right? Um, uh, I went to the DMV um, a couple months ago because I needed to get my license updated. Well, I had to drive there. Then I had to wait in line. Then I realized as I walked up that I had forgotten my social security card. So then I had to drive home, get my social security card, beg the person in line to let me keep my little, my little number. And I said, I, I swear I'll be back in like 10 minutes, um, which I was. But then I got back and then I had to wait in a chair till they called my number um, and then go back up. And now I've just got my fingers crossed that I didn't forget something else that I needed. Um, now I did try doing it online. They do have an online experience, but very limited capabilities and tech integrations. And so as Scott and I were riffing on like, okay, so what are some things that, what are some how, what, how might we's uh, that we could work on? It's like, well, how might we improve the experience of going to the DMV, right? Like that's, that's nice and broad. You wanna make sure that you're, 
framing these challenges um, nice and broadly. Um, another is, uh, you know, how, you know, how might we change the experience for the way you do tabs in your car, right? Um, uh, Scott, well, uh, can you can you talk about the riff we had real quick? On yeah, well, I, I don't know, but it depends on when you're you come up, what month. But I swear, all of our cars are like February, and I feel like you know you go out in the garage, it's 15 degrees, you kind of lick your finger and you scrape the salt off, and that's gross. <laughs> and maybe I'm just need to improve my process, but that whole sticker <laughs> thing, and there's like you know eight stickers, and you put the ninth sticker on, and and you're going, why the hell am I even putting a sticker on? Why can't they just figure out a different way to do this? Is, are, is, is the sticker business owned by the government or what? But I mean, just the tab experience is again, full of friction um, and it's just not a great experience. So that was, the, that was one of the things where, you know, if, if we were in charge of the DMV, we'd figure out a different way to go about it. And then the third one, uh, is, you know, how might we imagine the DMV without a physical location? Um, again, I, like many of us um, in our businesses, people can't walk in. You can't walk into the innovation space and do a bunch of post-it notes anymore. Well, what if they said, hey, you can't walk into a DMV? I, you might even say, why have people walk into a DMV? Um, maybe there are other opportunities here um, for us to discuss and play around with. Um, so uh, what, what we wanted to do was take a quick poll of everybody that's in Mural um, to find out which challenge we think uh, is one that we want to start riffing on. And you guys are doing an awesome job of riffing already. Um, but I'm going to do something special here. Uh, I am going to turn on a voting session um, for 30 seconds. Uh, let me just get my clock. Uh, down here to 30. Um, I'm going to give everybody uh, a one vote. Okay, you're going to get one vote and I want you to click on one of the green post-it notes, either how might we number one, how might we number two, or how might we number three. Um, so any member of this mural. Great. So you're going to, um, so we're going to begin. It's called a voting session. Um, and again, uh, I'm going to summon everybody uh, to my screen. That's good. And I want you to click on uh, how might we number one, how might we number two, or how might we number three. I've started the timer. Everybody should do this real quick. When you're done, uh, give me a thumbs up in your uh, Zoom because I can't, I can't tell. Um, you can use your little emoticon or you can hold your thumb up either way. I'm just looking for a number of pluses. Thumbs up. Sarah, I see you. That's good. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Okay. 37 people are voting. That's awesome. Okay. Time's up. We're going to take the poll um, and exit out of here. I'm going to end the voting session. Okay. Uh, number, all right, we got a winner, which is great. Let me just take a screenshot so that I remember. Um, but I, I agree with the room. So uh, uh, those of you in Zoom can see uh, where the voting landed um, was over in the, uh, how might we imagine a DMV without a physical location? So, um, we're going to bring this one over here into our uh, How Might We board. Um, so let me just unlock this real quick. And uh, just a, a little um, commentary on this. Um, in the sessions I've been in where we've used methods like this, uh, I think there's a question about who, get, who should attend these things. And usually it's like a cross-pollination, uh, different departments, different seniority, you want people with lots of experience, no experience, and sometimes the, the aha moments, you know, I call them Columbo moments, they're the, the people you least expect. Um, I was in a session with, uh, it was a woman who ran a call center and, and her ideas were amazing, you know, and she was, I think, three years out of college. And so make it diverse up and down, left and right throughout your organization. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I moved over. To, uh, I'm going to summon everybody over to my screen um, to our board here. Um, and we're going to spend the next uh, about three to five minutes um, putting what ifs in there, right? So we have a how might, we have an opportunity. So, um, so how might we imagine a DMV without a physical location? So what I want you to think in your brain is so like, well, what if, what if we had this? Like, well, what would this be? Or what would that look like? Um, uh, uh, I want to see everybody generate. Um, and and uh, I apologize in advance. Um, if people write big post-it notes, just I may come in and just make them a little bit smaller. Um, uh, this was a good gas pump one. I'm just going to make that a little smaller so we have more room. But um, So we're in the generation mode right now. Our, our goal is to generate lots of inputs. If you see somebody's idea up there, a riff off of it. You riff around it. Um, uh, I love seeing the circle post-it notes. That's great. Ooh, what if the DMV was a club we joined? Um, uh, we can riff off of that too. <clears throat> um, what if we had biometric validation? Um, that's great. Um, I love that uh, whoever wrote that put the question mark in here. Um, you know, one of the things that's important, again, keep generating as I'm, as I'm blabbing, um, is uh, that we frame these things up as opportunities or questions. Um, that way we can, we can talk about them, not, we don't want to judge them. One of the things that kills innovation right away is it, if you get too specific um, and you, and you don't do it in that, in that what if kind of way. Um, this is good. Uh, what if the DMV had marketing automation personas, et cetera? Great. Uh, what if we take the best practices from the medical industry? Good. Uh, what if library cards could help us get our license renewals, proof of, of living local? That's good. Um, I'm going to start a timer uh, because this can get really fun and crazy. Um, uh, so I'm going to give us another uh, two minutes um, starting a timer. So they've got this little... This kind of cool Podomo clock, one of the things when doing this kind of work is give your time box yourselves. Um, but in that time box, you really need to push. Now, if anybody is not in the mural with us, um, go ahead and type it in the chat because uh, Kelly is standing by waiting to take your, your chat messages and, and put them into the mural. So if, if you aren't able to join us in the mural, go ahead and do it that way. <clears throat> what if car dealerships took on the DMV role? That, that's good. What if the DMV gave loyalty points based on cars owned? I agree. I mean, how many cars have some of us owned? <laughs> we keep paying. Um, uh, what if the DMV was uh, linked with tax returns? It's good. Uh, what if the DMV offered incentives? Uh, how might we create an app to consolidate DMV offerings? Ooh, I like, I like that. Um, uh, sometimes you might come up with another, how might we, while you're doing this. That's great. <clears throat> um, more of everything online, including, uh, knowledge tests. Yep. Okay, we got 30 seconds. See if you can push, see if you can riff off somebody else's idea. Um, as you guys can see, uh, this is a little unfair because um, normally when we do this, um, we do say it, stick it, meaning I want you to write down what you're thinking and you say it out loud and stick it up on the wall. Um, uh, so uh, we're not doing that today, but normally if we were doing this in a group, I'd have people saying and saying it and then sticking it. <clears throat> now, Kelly, how many people did you say were on this with us today? Today we have about sixty-five. Okay, cool. 
Uh, big Nick, big I like big. the one with uh, that we're serving ice cream at the DMV. I want to make yeah. sure that one gets noted. I think that's uh, an important piece of this equation. I don't know who that was. DMV serving ice cream while you wait. That's the least we deserve. I also want to note that to add on to um, Scott's answer as far as where do you find people to do this kind of stuff, Shar had a question earlier in the chat about this. Um, there are people out there in your network um, that you can connect with, um, but as adding to Scott's point, the more <coughs> um, not unusual the characters, because that might classify in certain ways, but you have to find <coughs> people that um, are willing to think in this way or naturally think in this way. Um, so discovering people that are, that are like that, that are in that world um, and that are on the same, in the same place with you as far as what their intentions are when they're hoping to work with you and ideate with you and they're all over the place. Um, especially once you expose them to the, what's possible when you do this. Right. All right, so uh, this looks good, guys. So uh, I'm going to do uh, two things here real quick. Um, so I'm going to close the – everybody put their pens down for just a second. Um, that's an that's a old Sharpie metaphor. Ha, ha, ha. Um, uh, uh, let me just restructure this real quick. Um, oop, I clicked the wrong button. And um, – not letting me do something or the, okay so um one of the things that uh, uh aaron always laughs when i say this so um it's kind of funny but it's rude to cover up somebody else's post-it note so i'm just moving these around just a little bit to make sure that um uh nobody's covered up um i love all the action on here um this looks good all right so um, again, so now we vote. I'm going to turn the voting back on. Again, um, two votes, really, really simple. You guys did it briefly before. Um, I want you to vote on uh, the ideas here that you think are, are interesting um, that maybe we should keep riffing on. Um, so I'm going to give everybody three votes this time. Uh, actually, I'm going to give everybody five votes, okay? When you click on a post-it note, it, it adds a vote. If you click on it again, it'll add a second. If you click on it again, it'll add a third. Um, so I'm going to turn on um, voting. I'm going to give us 30 seconds. So I need you to vote fast. So we're going to start a second voting session. Voting. So Nick, again, just to clarify, if you did do three of them, it means you really love that idea. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, um, and uh, I'm going to turn the voting on, so you can begin voting now. And so again, if you click on something, uh, if you want to remove a vote, if you click it on the wrong spot, um, if you click on it, if you click on your little dot again, it'll give you a little menu that says remove vote, um, or you can shift click. Shift click takes a vote away. Um, so everybody's got five votes. Uh, I'm going to start the timer for 30 seconds. So vote quick. Um, we'll let the clock count down. Um, <clears throat> As you're doing this, Nick, I've um, I think it ends, Scott, that uh, when we're done with this and we've got this recorded, we should probably send this to Governor. Uh, Waltz yeah. and make sure he's got some the kickoff of a, of a set of ideas that he can use to improve the DMV experience. Mm -hmm. He's a little preoccupied right now by this this whole virus thing, but maybe after that, uh, right, we'll have, he'll have a little time to think about the DMV experience. So this is a good yeah. opportunity to innovate the DMV experience, right? Yeah. So. Um, Nick, we may want to. I, I've we've seen a couple of questions about confirming how people vote. I know, I don't know if we're going to have any more voting opportunities here in Mural, but if you could quickly just describe how to do that. I know we're out of time for this one, but I did want to make sure everyone's clear on sure. how to vote. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so voting, uh, all you, all you do, uh, uh, as we close the session, of course, I'm sorry, guys, um, is you just click right on the post-it note anywhere in the, in any of the post-it notes. And as you can see here, um, uh, 
uh, on my screen uh, if you're in Zoom or uh, you should be able to see it if you're in Mural. Um, there are now a bunch of numbers that have appeared um, by each post-it note so we can see the ones that got um, uh, the most votes. Um, so one, one of the things that is important to do, right? So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of inputs in here. Um, and so we want to uh, make sure that we're looking at um, what matters. Um, this is an important step. Um, and so there's two, there's two tools here that, that you can use. So um, one is um, I'm gonna pull down uh, the, the ones that got voted the most. Um, into our top, middle, and tier down the bottom. And then Scott, if we could talk through them real quick um, and kind of like, how do they fit back into the boxes? So I'm just gonna, uh, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just gonna, whoop. I'm going to uh, just move them for us so that we can just quickly get a sense of uh, what we voted on. I got to zoom in here to some of the numbers are a little small. Hey Scott, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so if you want to talk about how, uh, so how do we, how do we leverage the kind of the, the free boxes at our, our top, our top picks? I'm sorry, I, I there's some background noise. Repeat that one more time, Nick. How do we leverage the uh, the boxes um, as we look at our top oh. picks here? So you're talking about box one and three? Yep. Yeah. Well, I think I think one, I, you, you're uh, kind of putting these into categories, like anything that's like mobile first or, you know, club loyalty related. You're, you're getting kind of the, where there's heat around a concept. Is that what you're doing right now? Yeah, I'm just moving into top, middle, high. Um, so I'm not arranging them left or right. Got it. Yeah, well, I think I think when you think about if box three is inventing the future, I think most of these things are, um, they are, they tend to be um, box three. I mean, if there's no physical location, um, I mean, we're in that, they're almost already in, almost exclusively in the box three. You know, because we're not talking about shortening the queue in the existing physical real estate, that'd be a box one improvement. Right. How do I how do I get in and out of there in five minutes? That'd be a box one thing. We're already kind of saying there is no physical location, so we've we've already pointed everybody to box three. <clears throat> it kind of feels like the the DMV deserves a lot of box three solutions. You know, it kind of fits that. It it feels like incremental innovation within the DMV is is merely lipstick, mm -hmm. um, right? Right. I it agree. just isn't going to do it. It's painful. I mean, it might be a function of um, budget and timing. If it's like, hey, we have the budget in 2024. Okay, great. In the meantime, shorten the queues, give ice cream out, you know, those kinds of things. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I agree. It's it's it 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 deserves the box three attention and thinking and dollars. Right. right. I'm just resizing these to, oh, make them a little, little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, this just this organization just takes a, a, a second here. So, uh, you know, basically, guys, you know, what, one thing you want to do is, you know, get all your threes down at the bottom. It doesn't mean that they're the, um, that they're not worth working on. It's just kind of how that, how the group that you had. To, uh, brought together, how did they organize these things? Um, and so uh, at a high level, um, you can start to see then how we start to look at, um, you know, what matters. Um, and this eight is totally getting in the way, so I can't leave it. Um, what if license plate were digital and never expired, right? So this was, this was our top vote getter. Um, so what, what I want to do real quick is um, uh, I'm, we're going to sprint you through and just talk you through, okay, so 
if this was the what if that got the most votes from your team, right? So, you know, whether you're leading a team, whether you're the CEO, whether you're managing a department, whether it's just you and a bunch of friends, um, you ask them to come together to help solve a challenge or a problem. And this was the thing that, that had the most energy around. Some of these are probably attached to this uh, kind of like a, a digital experience. Um, what you want to do is you want to do this again. Um, uh, you're going to take this thing. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it here. Um, and you want to turn this back into a how might we. So, um, you know, so how might you take a license plate and make it digital, right? Um, you want to word it. I've got some examples here. Um, there's different ways to write these how might we statements. But the key thing here, this is how you go deeper, is you take that one thing, that what if, and you serve it back up as a how might we, an open-ended opportunity, so that you can riff on it again and go, okay, great. So um, how might we make them digital? Are, are you saying that license plate, or um, sorry, license plates, uh, do, I mean, do they, do they need to be digital? Do they even need to exist on the outside of the car? What if your license plate was on your phone? What if your license plate was some other piece? You know, we use QR codes um, and augmented reality now. All we got to do is hold it up to a poster. There doesn't say anything about take me to this website and all of a sudden magically I'm there. What if a, what if a first responder could walk up behind a car, hold it up um, to your vehicle and your, your sticker that says peace man was actually like the sticker that was your personal identifier. Like there's lots of what ifs in here that we could be thinking about. Um, and as you do that, as you come up with these new ideas, um, again, it's about framing and segmenting these things into like, okay, great. Of all of these new what ifs that we came up with, what's most likely to succeed? What's most likely to delight the customer? or maybe even the first responder, and what would be the most breakthrough idea? They're not always mutually exclusive, but when you vote on them, you can figure out uh, where, what are those top ideas, um, and then you, then you can figure out how to move them forward. Um, a, a question, I'm going, I'm going fast here, and Scott, jump in on this, this next one, of course, is, so how do you know where to focus then? Well, you need to take those and uh, a quick way to do it is an impact effort chart, right? Would this be hard or easy to do? Um, and what kind of impact would it have? Would it have a lot of impact or a little impact? Um, and I think Scott, we talked about the ROI that would go with it. Yeah, and I, I think you, you look at cost and timing, risks, rewards. Um, the impact effort is a great way to look at it. And I think, you know, when you look at this, um, what if statement it, it we're really saying is digital transformation for the DMV. I mean, it's like this, because if you take that, you go like, well, how does that, how do digital payments, they, you know, that'll fall out of there. Um, your idea about the QR code. I mean, this is, it's way beyond the digital license plate, but that causes you to think about all these other things that are impacted by that. What if statement. Right. Well, and, and I'm just putting these little uh, uh, numbers in or letters in here just as an example, but, so those were the five top ideas that were, some might be the most breakthrough, some might be um, the easiest to implement. Um, this A, E, and D, these are where I'd spend my time. That's where I would guide my team. Um, and I would say, well, let's run an experiment. What if we did idea A? Like, how would we do it? What's the hypothesis? Um, and then we'd start gathering results and after we run that experiment, um, we might run experiments on E and then we might run a few experiments on whatever idea D was. And then I'd put that back into a story so that I can go share it with the team, partners, collaborators, uh, the C-suite, so that I can tell them, listen, this was the problem. Here's what the new future state could be. This is why it matters to our company. Um, and when we brought this idea forward, um, this is what we found. Um, and so we think the solution is this and why this is important for 
us, our organization, or our company. Um, and so these are, again, these are just uh, innovation tools um, that we teach in our academy that uh, we use with clients and that uh, uh, Scott and Aaron and the team at Capsule, uh, we use all the time to help people get focused um, on their design challenges and, and think expansively about other, other possibilities. <laughs>